Squatch. Na 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 na. It's Squatch. Na 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 na. It's Squatch. Do 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 do. It's Squatch. Do 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 do. It's Squatch. Do 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 do. Hello, YouTube. My name is Paul. Hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back to another pickup video. A hit squad pick up video now I'm still trying to get used to this phone at the minute and the camera so it's got a bit dark I'm about to chuck it down outside I think my light isn't bright enough so you should still be able to see my ugly mug but until I get used to these camera settings it might be a little bit dark for a while so yeah as promised these hit squad titles are mostly uh, gifts uh, from fellow youtubers and a subscriber um, games that I am familiar with in the main. Um, some of these games may probably be some of my favourites of their genres, or particular genres, on the ZX Spectrum. But yeah, there's nothing here that is particularly what I would call rare. Um, there's a couple that are quite difficult to get. Most of these games you would expect to pick up for probably 5 to 10 quid. Might have the odd exception where it's a little bit more, but most of them probably be between 5 and 10 quid, yeah. Including post. But yeah, it's been nice watching other YouTubers and other collectors um, and watching their Hit Squad collections grow. Um, as far as I know now, I know of about four Sinclair Spectrum Hit Squad collectors. Uh, that's not including myself. One for the 64. There's a couple out there for the Amstrad, but they're predominantly on Instagram. But yeah, the Amstrad is definitely the more complicated to collect. I think they're both the Amstrad collectors around about the sort of 70, 80 mark. Uh, and they're really struggling to find those last remaining games. I don't, but no bloody, well, <laughs> a lot of sympathy for them, actually. I was say no sympathy. I've got lots of sympathy because it's bloody hard to find for the Amstrad. So, yeah. So, there's one out there, as far as I'm aware, who's finished his full set collection. Um, there's two, Dave and Scott, like myself, who are pretty much in a similar sort of position now. I mean, Dave and Scott are lucky enough to have a couple of really big hitters in their collection, which I don't. So, they're sort of... 12 I'm missing at the moment are predominantly the 12 most difficult hit squad games to find. I think I've got one or two decent titles that are hard to get, but nothing too pricey. Whereas the ones I'm waiting for now are going to cost me a bloody arm and a leg. <clears throat> There's a new collector out there. It's not a new collector. He's very, very active on the Facebook Facebook groups and all. And that's uh, Sega Junkie. He's going absolutely mental picking up hit squad games at the minute. I think he's almost got a full set already. But yeah, that's brilliant. And you've got a guy collecting for the Commodore 64 who's yet to disclose who that person is. Again, going great guns. I think he's probably got over 100 games already. So, yeah, it's great watching these guys go for these sort of full sets because they're not as easy as they sound. But, yeah, so I've got a nice mix of games. As like I said before, some are highly nostalgic in this bundle. Um, but, yeah, I've already shown off one of Dave's games in the previous video. I think it was the very first video I did, which was Weckle Mans, which is a really, really good driving game. A game I could quite proudly say I finally completed earlier this year. It took me years to beat that game. Without a cheat, anyway. But yeah, so do excuse the light, because it is dark. It's not dark outside, but it's about to hammer down outside. Um, you should still be able to see the games as I show you them on the screen. But yeah, so the first one I've got to show you then... Is Hyper Sports, which is probably one of my favourite uh, multi-sport events ever. I've got to say, I don't know if I've ever played this in the arcade before. But my good old mate Dave and his big bag of uh, Spectrum games that were given to him by his bigger brother. This was in it, and I absolutely loved it. Now this game isn't as big as I remember it. I always thought there was a lot more events than there is. Maybe it's just me, but I'm pretty sure there ain't many events. I can remember the swimming, because that used to be an absolute bark, especially when you had to sort of go and breathe. Uh, weightlifting, you had one where you had to jump on a springboard and somersault your way out the screen. Um, play pigeon shooting, some really different sorts of events, really. So, so, I was so used to playing Daily Thompson's Decathlon. This was quite a nice, refreshing change. But certainly one I'd recommend, like I said before, this was probably the cheapest one, and one of the most common games in this bunch of 10. But that's Hyper Sports, and that is Sports number five. But yeah. So next up is a game that was gifted to me by Scott, Sega Zombie. He did share a few photos with me on Instagram and asked if I had any of these games. 
And the one I didn't have is the one I'm going to show you. And that is Arkanoid. Which is a, a Taito arcade game. Converted by, I think this is Imagine Software. Uh, again, I'm not a fan of bat and ball games. This is arcade number seven, this one. And both games got a hit squad release. Pretty cool, but yeah, cracking little game. It's a really good arcade conversion, but like I said, it's not the sort of genre I would go to. Um, to play. Well, thank you very much, Scott. Really appreciate that, mate. So I was looking for that, an Arkanoid Revenge of Doe, when that came up. Uh, when you showed me that, another one came up literally as part of a bundle, which is a pain in the flipping arse when that happens. So yeah, great to have it in the collection. And a lovely gift from Scott. Our right, next up is uh, another gift. This one was from Daryl or Load Dit Dit. You might see him in the comments. A game, again, you, you don't see it a lot uh, on eBay. It's not an expensive game. Some people have this game listed for £80, and it's nowhere near an £80 game. Um, and that game I remember mostly from a CVG review. It looked really good. Um, I never really got around to playing it. And that is uh, Zybots, which was released by Domark. This is RK27. It's kind of one of those like fake 3D environments. It's pretty much like a maze. You've got to get from A to B, uh, picking up. I'm not sure if you pick up keys. I can't know if you pick up keys. You definitely pick up like energy. You pick up. Um, different weapons and you've got sort of androids giving you a hard time which reminds me a lot have you ever played defcon 5 on the on the playstation it's a bit like that i suppose nothing like it really but it just reminds me of that when i played defcon 5. i was with now again yeah it's more nostalgia than anything i've not really played it much i played it quite a bit whilst making my amiga power top 100 video um i did actually really enjoy it and you can play it two players which is fantastic now next up is a game from David, Retro Games Play Badly. Um, get a lot of press at the minute with his old uh, YouTube of the Month campaign. But he can actually be a nice guy. He can be a very nice guy. Now it's a New Zealand story. Again a game I remember predominantly on my Atari ST. But yeah, special version is monochrome. Um, which kind of takes a lot of it out for me because the arcade original again by Tato is very colourful and to play it on the spectrum and it's just literally you've got a yellow background it's a bit boring really but yeah so coming back to play this game was a bit grim even though it's probably not a bad conversion for the Sinclair Spectrum this is arcade 32 but yeah didn't even feature my top 10 arcade conversions by Ocean because I wasn't well, that impressed with it to be honest I know a lot of people out there probably like it that is another gift from Dave. Well, thank you very much, Dave. As is the next one. But Dave is always sending pictures across, asking if I've got particular games. And now he's kind of moved ahead in the Hit Squad collection. I'm hoping he finds some of the games he's got that I, ha I haven't. Some of the more difficult ones to find. Um, you do have to rely sometimes on, on other people in the community, because otherwise you're doing it yourself. It's a long, old, lonely road. <laughs> So Bubble Bubble, a good platform with this one. One of the more finer platforms on the Sinclair Spectrum. My best mate Sam had this, and he loved it. We used to play it two-player. Yeah, this is arcade number 30, a game I recently played with Glory Hunter 84 in Blackpool in the arcades, and he absolutely trounced me. I think I lost about 100 lives. Just kept con We kept continuing until the continues ran out. Again, not an overly difficult one to get hold of, but certainly a very popular one because it's such a great game. So thank you very much, Dave. That's the three games Dave has given me. Bubble Bobble, New Zealand Story, and Weckler Mans, which is in the first video. And the next game is the last one I actually picked up myself. Um, it came on the 6th of November. That's how long it's been since my last Hit Squad pickup. That's Dragon Spirit. Now this game I could have got from an eBay, I think it was an eBay buy it now, there's three games including this, but I kind of hummed and hard about it, I thought it was a little bit expensive for 15 quid. Lo and behold I went back and it had gone, so I went back to Retro Cavern who had this game listed I think for like 8 95 or 9 95 I can't remember, which is probably a little bit expensive for this particular title. This is RK36, 
has a decent little conversion, I've got to say, on the Sinclair Spectrum. It's one of those games, like most Spectrum games, which require you to fire a bullet or drop a bomb. You need to use a space bar. So it's a pain in the ass trying to get into the rhythm with a joystick and then push on the space bar. It's definitely something that's worth playing with keyboard. But yeah, again, really nice to have this in the collection because it did elude me for a little while. Um, even though it was always up there to buy, I just thought it was a bit expensive, to be honest. Last Dragon Spirit, again, another one released by Domark. Which is quite a few here released by Domark, to be honest. Gotta say. Now the next one is highly nostalgic. So when, when I saved up for my Atari ST back in the summer of 89, I used to buy the CMVG magazines. I've still got my original CMVG that I bought. I think it's like June 1989, it might have been July. And in it was like the New Zealand story, a game called Chicago 30s. There was, uh, I'm sure APB was in it, Vigilante was in it. And this, this game was always stuck with me, even though I never bought it back in the day. That's James Bond, Licensed to Kill. Got to be one of the most nostalgic games for me uh, that I've never played, to be honest. And I always remember seeing the screenshot or the loading screen in CMVG. It looked absolutely amazing. We had the sort of oil tank with the explosion at the back and Bond and his arch enemy on the front. They're absolutely fantastic. I'm pretty sure it's very similar to the front cover, actually. So, yeah, I never got around to playing this for quite some time. I think it might have been the sort of mid 90s by the time I played it. It's a game I've got now on the ST, got it on the Amiga, got it on Spectrum. But it's flipping hard. I don't know if you've ever played this game, but it's brutally hard. Trying to avoid the buildings and not crashing your helicopters. Flipping bloody hard. Quite a difficult one to get. One of the more difficult ones to get. Because this one and the next three are probably the more difficult ones to get in this pile, to be honest. You can go for between 5 and 10 quid, like I said before. Did I say it already? Movie 17? I think I already said that. So I'm really pleased to have that. That one was given to me by Low Dit Dit or Daryl. Um, so that's two of the four games he's given me. And next up is a game I remember swapping for one of my games in school. Now when I got this game home, I was a little bit disappointed. It looked fantastic. I got fantastic reviews from what I remember. It's just very, very slow. And that's Driller. Uh, I think Incentive Software published this originally. Uh, they did also, I think they made a few other sort of sequels to it. It was Total Eclipse a sequel to it. I want to say Dark Side. Now, Dark Side you very rarely see. But yeah, Drill is quite difficult to get. It does come up every now and then. It, again, it can go for 5 to 10 quid. Um, this is Arcade 22. So yeah, not a bad game. Probably better if you speed up your uh, processor's clock speed on an emulator or play it on the Spectrum Next. Again, with the speed jacked up, it might be all right. But for me, it's just too slow, even back in 1988 or 87, whenever it came out. The next two games are probably my two favourite games, not to play, but to have in my Hit Squad collection. And both of these games were given again by Daryl. So thank you very much, Daryl, for these games. Much appreciated. Um... But yeah, so next up is Total Recall, which... I haven't seen on eBay for ages, I've got to say. Um, I've seen it up for the Commodore 64. Game I never had back in the day. A film I remember watching and absolutely loving. This is Movie 25. I think it's quite a late spec you released. Must have been about 91, I want to say. 1991. Um, it's, it's, it was a weird platformer in the sense you've got a lot of puzzles to solve before you get access to different parts of the level. So I think you've got... A, I think you've got to trip a couple of keys or move a couple of switches or whatever you've got to do to allow you to progress, like uplifts and stuff like that. So it's a bit of a thinking man's game. Not really my thing, because it's, it's my memory's not great, so I kind of forgot, forget what I'm doing. And it's quite clunky as well to play, especially when you're trying to fire your gun or punch uh, one of the enemy. But to look at, it looks great. It's got great graphics, it's got great music, great, great atmosphere. Uh, I'm really pleased to have it in the collections. I love, just love that. that well, box art. Not really box art, is it? It's a picture taken from the film, but it's just, it's the colours of it I love. Very much like Terminator 2. But yeah, cracking game to have in the collection. One of the more obscure titles, as is the next one, which is a game I did buy back in the summer of 89, I believe. I got it recently as a pickup, um, complete with its shuriken and mask. I was really, really pleased to get this one in the collection. That's Last Ninja 2. 
Again, a difficult one to find. I actually loved this game. Couldn't get very far in it. I was absolutely mesmerized by the graphics. Uh, for some reason, this is Sports 17. I don't know why it's a flipping sports title. I don't think they, they probably fit it into the right genre, to be honest. It's not an arcade game as such. Again, more of a thinking man's game. Um, Gameplay-wise, it's very good. It's, it's, I know it's highly regarded on the Commodore, Commodore 64, um, but the Spectrum version does look fantastic. It just plays, again, a bit clunky. It's a bit slow, and sometimes... I remember being stuck on the screen for absolutely ages and having no idea what to do. And that put me off. But yeah, cracking game to have back in the collection, though. That, again, looks fantastic. So yeah, that is the 10 I've got to show you. I've got one more on the way, which is another... Well, it's a really difficult title to get. I think I've now got pretty much all the titles, which I would probably regard as easy to get or sort of moderate. It's the tough ones I don't have. I've got two or three toughies, but nothing nothing in the same league as sort of Scott or Dave, really, or any of the other guys, really, almost completing their full sets by now. But yeah, so brilliant. I do enjoy collecting, but it has slowed down. So at the minute, I've got, I think I've got 100 and... 12 titles, 113 titles, no I haven't, that's a lie Paul, 102, 103 titles, I can't remember exactly what it is, and uh, yeah, I don't really want to tell you what I'm outstanding, because it'll be a nice surprise when you see the games I have, I don't want to spoil it for you, do I, so yeah, there'll be another video, hopefully in the next four weeks, I think I've now done 40 odd games, about 70 left to go, or 60 that I have, and 70 in the full collection. So I hope you enjoy this series of videos, and sorry if the camera is a little bit dark. Um, so I get used to it, it's going to have to be that way for a little while. So now I need to get back on the campaign trail, as I'm actually getting spanked again by Dave, Retro Games played badly. Not only is he hammering me on the Hitsworld collection, but he's destroying me in the YouTube of the Month nominations. So I need to get to work, and work bloody hard at it as well. So thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for subscribing. I'll see you guys again real soon. So take care, and bye for now.